All right. Well, just speaking frankly, I, I am I am honing in on on you individually, as opposed to politicians in general. And it, and it strikes me that when people lose faith, when people no longer trust you, a natural reaction is to stop listening. And when they stop listening in politics, as you know, you're as good as gone. Is it possible that this is one of the reasons you are having trouble getting your message out at the moment because people no longer believe you? Oh, Ben, I don't agree with your analysis, and I don't think we're spending our time wisely. You can't blame people for switching off when you talk about this stuff because of what you said last time and the fact that it turned out to be untrue. So I'm trying well, to get to the I'm trying it. to get let's to the heart of that. It. Okay, let's take it head on. Uh, what you're raising with me is what I said about a carbon tax in the 2010 election. And yes, I didn't foresee the result of the 2010 election. No, 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 but Prime Minister, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about whether or not know, the, the, the issue of trust is affecting your re election chances. Yeah, okay, Ben, and I'll address it. And you've raised it with me, and I'd be grateful if you let me have the opportunity to answer. You are raising with me questions of trust because you are referring back to the words about a carbon tax in 2010. So if that's the nub of the issue, then let's... Be no, I'm, I'm not issue. talking about that, Prime Minister. Uh, equally, I didn't raise the surplus. I didn't raise poker machines. Andrew Wilkie, I'm just talking about well, you. I'm happy, I'm happy to go through them because Ben... I but I, I don't want to go through them, Prime Minister. That. I'm asking you about just that question of trust, whether or right, not you're I'm, concerned I'm about your believability. Uh, then let's talk about the question of trust. I think if you put out detailed policies and plans, people can assess them, people can weigh them, People can work out their worth and they can work out whether or not they're in favour of them. Now, when Kevin Rudd was rolled as Prime Minister, he was doing better in the polls than you were doing now. Why do you deserve to lead Labor to another election when you denied Kevin Rudd the same opportunity? Uh, well, uh, Ben, I've been through all of this before and at the end of the day, I am the person with the best capability to lead both Labor and our nation. Kevin Rudd is one of the most popular politicians in the country. Doesn't it stand to reason that the party would be a better chance of winning the election if Kevin Rudd was the leader? Uh, we resolved these issues in February last year. Let's talk about some issues that people have been talking to me about. I mean, all of this sort of political argy-bargy that was resolved by Labor last year, I think people just get bored by it. You reckon? I, I saw you at a press conference a few days ago. You were standing there and behind you were three of your Western Sydney MPs, Anthony Albanese, Ed Husick and Chris Bowen. Anthony Albanese, not necessarily in the West. No. Uh, but all of whom want Kevin Rudd leading the party. That must be awkward. Surely it's still an issue if, if three of the men standing behind you don't want you leading the party. Uh, well, we resolved this issue last February, so we can keep boring people by you asking me those questions and me giving the same answers, or we can talk about something more important. OK, if you, if you want to keep on giving those answers, that's your choice, Prime Minister. I saw uh, last night the Victorian well, Premier... those answers because that is the accurate answer. No worries. Uh, so, uh, the know, Victorian Premier last night stood down. If a delegation of Labor MPs came to you and asked you to put the leadership question to a fresh ballot, would you agree? Oh. Boring. Sorry? Uh, no, no, boring is what I'm saying. Uh, the oh, it's just a question. Party, you could always just party, answer it. Yep, and the party resolved that issue last February. Yeah, but you could always just answer the question, Prime Minister. And I just have. The party resolved that issue last February. OK, oh, Prime Minister, oh. you, you promised to fix the problem of people risking their lives by coming to Australia by boat. Since you've become PM, 26,814 people have made that dangerous journey. And when people arrive... Uh, at the moment, they're not allowed to work. Instead, they receive welfare payments. But you want to crack down instead on those who come here legally for work, who are no drain on the welfare budget. How does that make sense? Well, it makes sense this way. Why should we, as a nation, in circumstances where there is an Australian worker ready, willing and able to do that job, give that, give that job to anyone else except that Australian worker? Explain to me, Ben, how that makes sense. OK, it but what about those... We don't bring people in from overseas to work on a temporary basis for false skill shortages. No, but, but we've if got record numbers workers. of people coming here by boat. The detention centres are full, just about. People arriving by boat now are being scattered around the community, including universities we discovered recently, where, uh, sadly, a sexual assault recently took place, allegedly involving one of the people uh, who came here by boat. Uh, are you cracking down on uh, foreigners with work visas when really the attention should be on the other issue? Well, I think the, you know, these are all important issues. 457 visa holders, temporary overseas workers, this is an important issue. It worries people. 
and I've just indicated to you my very clear attitude on it. But John. Prime Minister, on that issue, you, your, your minister said that this is, you know, this has never been stronger. The vast majority do the right thing. On the other issue, you've got twenty six thousand eight hundred people who've arrived here by boat, risking their lives since you became PM. Isn't that the bigger issue that you've failed to, to tackle? Uh, we have worked to deter people from jumping on boats. We have, and we will continue to do so. Some of our plans have been stymied by the negativity of the opposition and their refusal to pass the relevant legislation. But you're, you're the Prime Minister. Isn't, aren't there times where you can just put your hand on your heart or can't just say, look, you know, in the Fair Income Department, yes, this, this has been a shocker on my part. I, I, I rolled Kevin Rudd and I said this was one of the issues that I was going to tackle first. You haven't tackled it. It's been a disaster. Uh, Well, we have worked hard on this. Of course, there's always more you can do, and I would like to do more. In order to do that, I need to get legislation through the Parliament. Prime Minister, I want to ask you uh, lastly about something I'm sure you don't want to talk about. It relates to your role as a lawyer at Slater & Gordon and your involvement in that slush fund scandal, the Australian Workers Union. When you helped set up this Workplace Reform Association, which ended up being a dodgy vehicle for union corruption, why did you allow it to be called the AWU, Workplace Reform Association, when it was not part of the AWU and you knew it to be a slush fund? I did not, and that's not true. You did not what? Oh, well, I did not know that the fund was going to be misused in the future. I, I didn't did suggest that. that. No, no, the question was, why did you allow it to be called the AWU, Workplace Reform Association, when it was not part of the AWU and you knew it to be a slush fund? I've dealt with these questions before, uh, dealt with the question of the incorporation before and the terms and objects of the association. Uh, I knew what purpose it was being. You know, I obviously have said publicly the purpose I understood it was being formed for and that wasn't what it was subsequently used for. I had no knowledge of that. OK, but if you knew it was a slush fund, why did you allow it to be called a uh, Workplace I, Reform Association? Uh, yeah, and I've uh, addressed all of these issues. Well, can't we address uh, it again? Uh, well, uh, you know, get out the old transcripts if you want. No, but can't we? T- uh, we're talking uh, about no, it now. Yeah, and uh, Ben, I'm going to answer your question if you allow me to say a few words without. Uh, uh, well, you, me you, off. you keep telling me to go to old transcripts, and I've dealt with it before. No, we're no, live no, on the well, air now. Yeah, live on the air now. Let me make the point. I've dealt with all of these issues before. You can look at the details on those old transcripts. Indeed, the opposition has acknowledged that the only reason they ever pursued this in the Parliament was to pay me back for the misogyny speech. They didn't like that. They didn't have any real belief well, I'd done anything wrong. They just involved in a bit of okay. political I, I, payback. I don't know anything. I, about, this I don't know anything about that. Look, did, did well, you did you write the, to the? In the it's been in the newspapers, Ben. And if you're interested in this, no, well, you familiarise yourself. Well, Prime Minister, we don't have, from the opposition. I, 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 I've, I've never read a statement to that effect, but I don't read every well, statement I, in every I, newspaper. I, okay, but can we just like focus that. on this well, conversation ben, between you and me? Did you write to the Corporate Affairs Commissioner in Western Australia after concerns were raised and vouch for the legitimacy of that association? Did you write to the Uh, Corporate Affairs Commissioner? No, you you misunderstand a lawyer's role. Uh, I would not write to anyone about anything personally vouching for things. To the extent that you ever write to anyone as a lawyer, you do it on the basis of the instructions of your client. Okay, final one on the power of attorney uh, issue. Can I, Ben, I think if you're going to raise these issues the best part of 20 years old, then I am entitled to point out, and I will, that the Deputy Leader of the Opposition... I'm not talking about the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Can I finish my sentence? Go for it. The Deputy Leader of the Opposition clearly said to the Sunday newspapers that the only reason this was pursued was as a political tactic because they thought I should be paid back about the misogyny speech, not because they had any real belief that I had done anything wrong. So people can worry about all of that theatre in politics. Uh, But really, I think, you know, from the streets of Western Sydney, no one's raised any of this with me this week, but they have raised issues that really matter. Okay, a final issue just on this. And I'm not talking about political drama and whatever. I'm talking about a police investigation that's currently going on. Now, you can see that money from the... Sorry? Be a bit careful, Ben. Do not uh, not slur me with that. I, I, I have not, Prime Minister. I just said there is a police investigation currently going on. You know that. Uh, and and you should uh, then clarify, and that's nothing to do with me. Well, I, I don't know that, Prime Minister. Do you know that? Well, it, uh, uh, yes, I do, and I've okay. asked that publicly before, Ben, and I'd refer you okay. to those statements. If you, 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 can see that, the you can see that money from the slush fund, this is the final issue, and I, I appreciate you bearing with me, you, you can see that money from the slush fund may have been used to buy a house in Melbourne. Now, you attended the auction 
with your then boyfriend, Bruce Wilson, but the property was purchased in the name of Ralph Blewett, even though he'd never seen the house. When this property was purchased on Ralph's behalf, the law states that you would have to be present when Ralph Blewett signed the documents. Ralph Blewett claims that you were not present. He claims that Bruce Wilson flew to Perth to get him to sign the documents and that you signed at a different time in a different place. Now, you did not fly to Perth to witness those documents, did you? Uh, and uh, I've consistently dealt with this too. I properly witness documents as a lawyer. So you can you can believe Mr Blewett or you can believe me, Ben. Uh, I'm not overly fussed what you conclude, but I witness documents properly as a lawyer. Okay. If you've always obeyed the law in carrying out your duties, you'd be able to make a statement to police uh, confirming that well, you've never uh, witnessed one of these documents uh, without the relevant well, ben, person being excuse present. Me, excuse me, that is incredibly offensive and I'm not going to let it go past. I have done nothing wrong in this matter. I have said that for 20 years. Uh, I will uh, continue to say that because it is the truth. Anybody who wants to know anything about this matter from my perspective has already got the benefits of it being canvassed publicly and in Parliament over the best part of 20 years. I've given full details and I never did anything wrong. And please don't use forms of words that imply the contrary. Prime Minister, you and Ralph Blewett were there together and signed the documents together. That's what you're saying, just to confirm. I've witnessed documents properly as a lawyer. Yeah, you and Ralph Blewett were in the room together. You signed them together, yes? Uh, Look, Ben, these documents were of, you know, as a lawyer, I witnessed thousands of documents. I was a lawyer for eight years. I witnessed thousands of them. I don't remember each document, but I witnessed documents properly. And if you've always witnessed them properly, then you and Ralph Blewett were in the room together and, uh, and signed at the same time. Well... Absolutely. I witnessed documents properly. And this one? What's your point? I witnessed documents properly. Okay. It just sounds like one of those things, Prime Minister, where I'm asking about a specific moment, whether or not... And and over eight years, uh, I can't sit here on the phone with you and go through every document. No, but... Just over eight years as a lawyer. Sure, but it it would stand out, though. ...to you is that this document was of no particular significance at the time, but my practice as a lawyer was to witness documents properly. Yeah, it was of significance because it was the only time that you were witnessing a document that involved the purchase of a property that your your then boyfriend was involved in. That's why it would stand oh, out. But it, it's like uh, it's like asking you, uh, can you give me the opening words of an interview you did three years ago? The matter had no particular significance at the time. It has this significance now uh, because of how politically uh, used it's been. It wasn't significant then. Okay, Prime Minister, my apologies if I've uh, upset you on any of those details, but I do appreciate not, you coming uh, no, on. I've been, it's not a question of you upsetting me, and I'm not going to have you create the impression with people that I'm somehow upset.